Hi guys, concerning news coming out of Italy from the super volcano Campi Flegre. You've seen my last videos maybe, it's rumbling there, there's earthquake swarms, it's intensifying. But what is scary right now is the Brady seism. A Brady seism is a gradual land rise or a gra gradual land subsidence. But we are talking about a land rise, the land is rising. So the Campi Flegre Brady seism is intensifying and we know if the land keeps rising, Rising, something's happening magma is coming something is coming the soil raised by 2.5 centimeters that's an inch in about 21 days that is a lot guys so the director of the Italian Institute for geology and volcanology she says that this significant increase must be kept under observation. And she has given an interview about that. And I wanna let you know what she is saying first before we have a closer look at the Institute of Geologies and Volcanologies weekly bulletin that they have just released. And I'll show you a few graphics that will visualize for you what is happening there. Is this the calm before the storm, guys? That's what we want to investigate. So at the Campi Flegre, they are currently observing an intensification of the Brady seismic phenomenon. In the last 21 days, between April 9th and April 29th, a lot of seismicity was recorded and it was accompanied by a variation in the land rise speed, in the speed with which the land was lifting. So there was a change. And also if there's a change, it always means something. And it was a jump in the lifting of the land rise. So it was going gradually and then all of a sudden, poof, it's going higher. So that means more is coming. Something is going on. So in Rione Terra, 2.5 centimeters, it was lifting up compared to the average amount that this is rising per month. The average amount is only one centimeter, so two and a half times that. So this is a significant increase. And that's why the experts are saying this has to be kept under observation. But to date, they still have no elements to suggest an imminent eruption but we have to notice this is very very hard to predict because there's no precedence for this super volcano that we could say in our lifetimes where the science was far enough so that this could have been recorded that scientists could learn from it it does that does not exist so they don't know exactly what it's doing before it erupts right so that's why it's a guessing game it's a guessing game anything is possible and that's why the preparation levels are increasing more and more and more like evacuation strategies because we're talking about an area there's the Campi Flegre you see it in the map behind me but there's also Vesuvius and that's quite a monster if this guy erupts check out my video about Vesuvius and what it can do will do it's overdue and there we have Campi Flegre and the interesting thing is like even until the early 2000s, the residents in the greater Naples area, that's like roughly 3 million people. And in the greater Vesuvius area, that's 700,000 people that basically live on the volcano in the red zone. But then there's the fishing town of Pozzuoli that basically lives on the caldera on Campi Flegre. But in average, most people thought that Vesuvius is the bad guy, that they need to be scared of Vesuvius. They were like, really like, what's Campi Flegre, right? Now that is changing. People are understanding that Campi Flegre can turn into a super volcanic eruption. And Campi Flegre is stretching about 100 kilometers wide. You see these maps here, all these calderas formed and these sulfataras with the fumaroles like steam coming out sulfuric gases volcanic gases but Campi Flegre is also stretching into the sea basically around Pozzuoli and so if there was an eruption that would origin in the sea so if water mixes with magma it could give an explosive eruption that could create a hundred feet high tsunami 30 meter high waves that would hit the coast 
towards Naples, 3 million people. So how do you evacuate that area? Because there might not be much warning time. Usually before an eruption, there is a massive earthquake swarm, seismic micro events, not super high, like in the six or seven range. But if you have a dot on the map where there is an earthquake, it goes like dot, 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 and it's a cluster. And then the magma comes to the surface. The earthquakes accompany the magma while it's grinding its way through the surface to reach the top. So there is not too much warning time to evacuate such a large area. Same with Vesuvius. That's why they have tried to get rid of people, so to speak, that live in the red zone around Vesuvius, like roughly 700,000 people. So they have offered them 30,000 euros if they move away, but there were not many takers. People are poor in this area. 30,000 euros, what does that get you, right? Because you can't probably sell your property that's right in the volcanic disaster area. And we've seen with Pompeii, what Vesuvius can do. But as I said, check out the full video. The link is um, in the end screen. So Campi Flegre is rumbling and it's a cause of concern, especially because the evacuation will basically not be possible. If Vesuvius erupts, 700,000 people will not have a chance of survival. And the same with Campi Flegre. And they're living right on this caldera. You see it here. It's, it's, it's densely populated. And that's what's so concerning. So Francesca Bianco, she's a seismologist and volcanologist. She has given an interview in this like newspaper fanpage uh, dot it Italy. Um, and she's the director of the volcano department of the National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology. That's the Italian like INGV. And she was the former director of the Vesuvius Observatory that was specifically founded to observe what Vesuvius is doing because it is overdue. So We'll talk about the weekly bulletin that was published from INGV as well for the period of April 22nd to the period of April 28th. And it highlights that there have been 193 earthquakes recorded in that week with a maximum of magnitude 3.9. So there was an earthquake that had 3.9 and that's quite significant. So also, in the last 21 days, there has been a ground lift in the area with a maximum deformation of approximately these 2.5 centimeters, roughly an inch. And we're talking of about a total uplift, right? Not the uplift speed, the total uplift of one inch in that week. So in the recent weeks, we had an uplift of around one centimeter between April 9th and 10th, and then half a centimeter between April 15th and April 16th. And the lifting speed as an average from December 2023 to the beginning of April 2024 remained at 10 millimeters per month. So one centimeter per month. And now we've done 2.5 in a week. So this increase in deformation was accompanied by this earthquake swarm with a magnitude 3.9 event recorded last Saturday off in the sea in the Gulf of Pozzuoli, just in front of the coast of Bacioli. So in the sea, if something coming up is coming up there, we just talked about it, what that would mean. Let's talk about that Brady size and that land rise. What does it mean? Because 2.5 centimeters in only 21 days compared to the average of only one centimeter per month is a significant increase. So this deserves attention. And that's why the scientists are saying they have to monitor the area as best as they can to intercept any anomalies as soon as possible so that they could give out a warning. So is this the first time that there has been an uplift like this? No, there have been other episodes of increased ground uplift in the past. So we have already seen two other episodes of increased um, lifting, which 
then subsided again. So the first was on December 6th in 2019, corresponding to the first earthquake of magnitude 3.1. And then at the time, that was the most important earthquake since 2005, 3.1. We have 3.9 right now. And on that occasion, in two days, there was a deformation of one centimeter, and then it was subsiding again. So then there was another one centimeter lift shortly before the magnitude 4.2 earthquake on September 27th in 2023. So 4.2. And that had the highest energy value of the entire Brady Sizem sequence. They're saying that they have a current network with extremely dense and sensitive devices that can measure this activity on a daily basis, And there will also be new installations for further investigation, that's for sure. So in the recent days, the residents that live around the calderas have noticed an increased smell of sulfur in some areas, especially probably where we have these sulfataras and the fumaroles. So is this concerning or, or not? So what the volcanologist has said that is probably due to different meteorological conditions and not due to changes in the constellation of these volcanic gases. So probably, maybe not concerning yet. But what they will do on May 6th, they have planned another citizens meeting and this time for the Neapolitan district of Bacioli. So in addition to Francesca Bianco, the head of the civil protection department, Fabrizio Curzio, the director of the Vesuvius Observatory will be there. Mauro Di Vito, he's a scientist and other institutional representatives will be there to answer questions of concerned citizens. So let's hope that this meeting will maybe get new information and new insights about what's happening at Campi Flegre right now, because the citizens are starting to be more and more and more concerned. And we already knew like four months ago that the residents in the Pozzuli area are consuming more anti-anxiety drugs because they're not so afraid about a potential eruption, which they should be, but they're afraid of a potential evacuation because they basically know that it is nearly impossible to evacuate that quickly. These are old streets, narrow villages and even Naples it's like completely a mesh mixed up like not in the US like straight and then vertical horizontal lines no and there is no major like six lane highways like in Texas where you could evacuate quickly and these old buildings if the earthquake swarm comes before the eruption they might crumble and block the roads so there is little little chance that everyone will get out it we have to be realistic if this is a large super volcanic eruption the the fatality rate will be very very high even if the eruption is small it's already going to be high because it's so densely populated and uh, i want to show you this map here that they have released in their weekly bulletin so these are the earthquakes the blue areas between uh, april 22nd and april 20 eight at the Campi Flegre area. So there you can see the Campi Flegre area is quite large and you can see these round caldera formations and you see that the earthquakes are already or also happening in the water. And the big one was in the water, basically at the doorstep of Pozzuli. Then let's have a look at this graph here that shows you the land rise. So it's starting in 2020 three and there it's basically like gradually increasing and then if you look here where the red line is and then it's in blue it's all over sudden it's making a jump and that's why they're concerned so what is this right and there's another graph where you can see it between January 2024 and April 29th. So it's a closer look basically only at the month of April. So what you can see from these graphs, we roughly have like 24 centimeters an increase in the year 2023 and already like with then the jump, 
about six centimeters already in the year 2024. So guys, we will have to wait and see. And we're also waiting and hoping to see what's going on in Iceland very, very shortly. The magma chamber is filling. It's still filling. That's what they said today. So they thought it would have stopped. Now it's filling again and we're waiting for new magma to be sent on the way. And that will threaten the defense walls of Grindavik that can flow into the town of Grindavik. Watch my video in the end screen because the lava carpet that has been created by the current eruption that's still ongoing is high than the defense walls and it has already breached the defense walls but right now it's not flowing very very fast but if the eruption increases through the new event because the magma chamber underneath Swartzangi is full again and it normally triggers an eruption when it's that full so that new lava will be very very liquid and will be very very fast and will approach the defense walls so they're working non-stop right now to find a solution for that so very interesting check this out guys and if you're new here please subscribe i would love to see you on a regular base and for my regular supporters thank you so much for watching please leave it a like and thank you for the coffees you've been bought buying me on my buymeacoffee.com site if you want to buy me a coffee check out the link is in the description thank you so much i really needed it the last few days i'm i'm really tired i haven't slept much but it's important that i keep you up to date um i i don't want to fall behind with the information so thanks so much thanks for the supers of course as well you guys are awesome and i see you very very soon i think with an iceland update so thanks a lot guys bye bye